it is reasonable. Now when we talk about if something is reasonable, it basically just means does my answer make sense? I have three tips for you today to help you to know if your answer makes sense. Your first tip is to ask yourself, should my answer be bigger or smaller than the numbers in the problem? If your answer should be bigger, you know you're probably going to be adding. If your answer should be smaller, then you're probably going to be subtracting. I have some problems here that have answers. We need to check if those answers are reasonable by asking, should my answer be bigger or smaller than the numbers in the problem? For the first example, it says, our class has 27 boxes of mac and cheese for the food drive. Another class in our hall has 13 boxes. How many more boxes do we have than the other class? I need to visualize what we're doing with this problem. With this problem, we're taking R27 and comparing it to a 13. And we're trying to figure out how many more. Well, when I'm comparing two things, say seven boxes to three boxes, I'm finding the difference. It should be less than seven boxes different because they have some boxes, which means our difference is less than seven. So I would expect that my answer is getting smaller. Well, this student solved it and said that there's a 40 of difference. That doesn't make sense. If I have 27, is there any way that I could have 40 more than the other class? No way. I know it's going to be less than 27 because they have 13, so they already have some. So I know that this answer does not make sense. It is not reasonable because I was supposed to be getting smaller, and instead I got bigger. Do you know what I probably did there? If you guessed I added instead of subtracted, you're correct. Let's look at the second problem. On Monday, I had a $45 in my bank account. For my birthday that week, I got $17 from my grandma. How much money do I have now? And this person answered it as 62. We need to check our work by saying, should my answer be bigger or smaller than the numbers in the problem? Well, in this problem, I started with some money. I got more money. I would expect that since I got more money, my savings account would be growing. It should be a bigger number. I can see that my number is indeed bigger, so I would say yes, as of right now, it sounds okay. 62 is bigger, I probably did the correct operation. Let's look at tip number two. With tip number two, after you know if you're adding or subtracting, you want to round first and get a reasonable ballpark for what your answer should be, and then take those rounded numbers and add or subtract them to estimate the correct answer. Let's see this in action. There are 234 pop cans and 178 glass bottles at the recycling center. How many recyclables are present? Well, I ask myself, am I getting bigger or smaller? I have one part that's 234, another part that's 178. When I put those two parts together, I should have more, which let me know I'm probably going to add. Then I ended up adding those numbers and I got 412. I need to see if I added them correctly by rounding first and then adding again to see what my estimate would be. Well, I know that 234 is pretty close to 200. I know that 178 would also round up to 200 if you're rounding to the nearest hundreds. I know that 200 plus 200 is 400. And so I compare that 400 to the 412 I had gotten for my exact answer. Well, I think I'm very close. I was doing some pretty big rounding here. I lost 34 here. I picked up 22 here. So I know that I'm doing pretty big shifts. In my final answer, I was only 12 off. So in this problem, I would say yes, it sounds reasonable to me because I rounded my numbers first and then I added to check my estimate to see if my answer was indeed close. Here's my final tip for you for when you want to check for reasonableness. The third tip is you want to double check what you, that you have actually answered the correct question. Look at the question and see, are they looking for a number? Are they looking for a word? Are they looking for all of the parts together or just some of the parts? You really want to make sure that you've answered the question that was asked. Here's an example. There are 15 red apples and 9 green apples. Which color has the most apples? I answered 15. I clearly knew what they wanted. They wanted the one that's greater. However, however did I answer the question? Well, the question says, which color? I found the maximum, but I gave you the number and not the color. So this is not a reasonable answer. The correct answer should have been red because that would have answered the question that was asked, which color had the most apples. And my second example says, on Monday it rained three inches, on Tuesday it rained two inches, on Wednesday it did not rain, and on Thursday it poured five inches. 
How many inches did it rain in all on Tuesday and Thursday? Well, I know that I'm putting days together, which is adding on, so I should be getting a bigger number. I did get a bigger number, so I'm feeling confident. I know that if I was rounding these numbers, 3 and 2, that's about 5, that's another 5, 10 seems reasonable. Now I just need to check that I answered the correct question. The question is asking how many did it rain in all for Tuesday and Thursday. If you did not pay close attention, you may have only stopped reading at the word all. But I don't want all days as in all every single day. I want to know how much rained in all on just two days, the Tuesday and the Thursday. Well, on Tuesday it rained two inches, and on Thursday it poured five inches. Since I'm getting bigger, I'm adding five plus two should have given me an answer of seven. So I know on this one my answer was not reasonable. Looking at it, if I had seven inches on two days, I bet what happened is this person added this third day as well of three inches, and that's how they got their ten. But I don't care what happened on Monday, only Tuesday and Thursday. So when you're checking for reasonableness, you have three things you need to do. Ask yourself, should my answer be bigger or smaller than the numbers in the problem? You can visualize it with those barcode diagrams. You can draw a picture, but somehow you need to get know, am I getting bigger or smaller? If it's bigger, you're adding. If it's smaller, you're subtracting. Once you know what operation to do, you want to round each of your numbers and do that operation, either adding or subtracting, to find an estimate. That way you have something to compare against to see if you made any simple mistakes. Finally, you want to reread that question and make sure that you answer the correct thing. If it's asking for a color, you need to give them a color word. If it's only asking for a subset of the total group, you need to make sure you've pulled out the correct information. As you're solving your word problems, make sure you are always checking, is my answer reasonable?